welcome back to Meticulous Mechanic. If you watched yesterday's video on the operation of the OEM cam chain tensioner, at the very end, I was talking about how it's futile to try to make a little key that goes into here. Futile in the fact that this spins and hits the frame. And if you watch it, there's a little more detail. So what I'm going to do today is try to make a better version. So yesterday's video goes into great detail about spinning this in. I have this spun fully counterclockwise and the spring's compressed. And then you're supposed to hold it compressed like this and insert this little tool 1RC-1228-00. I went online and I couldn't find one of those. I did see that it comes with a new cam chain tensioner. So I went down to the hardware store and bought a set screw. And I'm going to take my Allen key and pretty much slide it in like that. It slides in about an eighth of an inch. That'll allow me to turn the Allen key. And I bought a six millimeter threaded nut that I'm going to spin on like that. And I bought some JB Quick Weld. It's an epoxy with steel reinforcement. So I need to be able to figure out how long to cut this off at. I take this in, and when I put it in, when the tensioner is all the way out, and that's where it starts to turn, it sticks in about that far. So if I measure that, 33 millimeters. So I just learned something else about this cam chain tensioner. When you go to put the key in, this is just the one I'm going to be cutting off. When you put it in, it stops and you think it's in. But watch, if I squeeze that sixteenth of an inch I was talking about yesterday, then it actually goes in. So that's what you have to do to get this key in in the first place. And then you can start turning. So let's pull that out and measure that. I'll double check. So I double checked off camera and I'm just going to call that 36. So I'm going to compress the spring. If I slide this in, like I just said, it doesn't go in. So if I squeeze lightly, so now I'm spinning it back in again. Okay, that's all the way in. I'm going to see how long it is now. Pull it out. Stems. Now let me measure this. 12.5. So here's the face of the cam chain tensioner. And it comes out like this. So actually it's going through here like that. Let me erase this. That's how far it sticks in from there to there. It's 35. So I made a little black mark and that is at 36. So when I put this nut on, I have to pull it out far enough so I'll be able to grab it and turn it. So I'd say about there, about an eighth of an inch away from the face. I'm going to make a mark right at the top of the nut. So I'll thread this set screw into the top of the nut. So I need to see how far the Allen key goes into the set screw. So it looks like about four millimeters. So if I go over here, measure out the four millimeters. So I'll just add one millimeter in here, plus the four millimeters. 
because we know it goes in four millimeters. But I want this out a little bit to the line. Let's see. I'll cut it off from the face of the thing. One millimeter plus four millimeters. Five millimeters. Close enough for this. So if I go with that five, I'm a little shy of that line I made where I wanted it to be so I can still grab it with my fingers. So I'm just going to cut it off six millimeters from this face. Just giving myself an extra millimeter. So I'll make a mark there, six. I always like to shade in the part that I'm getting rid of. So I'll take this out and take it over to the cutter. I tried to cut this with a hacksaw earlier on some of those other iterations, but it would just bounce off. It's hard and steel. So I have this Dremel with this cutoff blade. I'm going to have to cut it twice once here because when I tried to cut it there, it hits. So the trick on this tool is obviously I got to be careful because this could slip and hit my hand. But you need to feed it in perfectly in a line. Because if you feed it in and you start to twist like this, it throws it out funny. So you got to be super careful. Ideally, this would all be mounted on something and my hand wouldn't be here. But we survived this time. Oh, and I did have my safety glasses on. So I was working on this video last night and editing it and somehow the audio kicked out and I lost all the footage of the second half, but I'll quickly recap what I did. I just took equal parts of this epoxy and I just put a, a dot here the size of a P and a dot the other side, same amount. And then I kind of stirred them up. Most people know how to mix up epoxy and then I... Well, I put some epoxy on the Allen key before I shoved it into the set screw. And then I just took my epoxy and I kind of smoothed it like this. And then I put some epoxy on the top here. So hopefully that'll, that'll keep this nut from spinning on those threads. So I just spin this all the way counterclockwise. Keep it held with my hand, pull this out. Put the new tool back in, or the tool I just made. Sure, it's in there, so it's holding it. Like this. so, I'm actually going to get to the camshafts today, which will be nice. And this should fit in here now, like that. I did try it last night. Um, you can get a wrench on there. It's hard to turn with your fingers, but I think it'll work. So once I get it installed, I can just turn it now. Seems to be extending like I want. And you can see how it goes in as you turn. That's why the little Allen key with the L doesn't work because it hits these nuts here. And if you make it longer, it hits the frame. The manual says turn this until it hits and then go another quarter turn. So we'll get to those camshafts today. That'll be awesome.